of Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Welcome to day 17 again. And today we are dealing with provision. Provision. And I just want to exalt you and give you insights about God's provision. Amen. When you read Psalm 103 verse 7, the Bible says that Moses knew the ways of the Lord. We must know the ways of God in order for us to be to receive the provision that He has for us. And so I want to talk about provision at the altar of sacrifice. Jesus. Somebody say altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. Yes. When it comes to provision, there's something that you must do. In order for God to be your gyra. We always say, oh, my Lord shall supply all my needs. According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. It's a good scripture to quote. But when you look at that scripture, if you look at the pretext of that text, you understand that the, the, Philipp, the Philippian church were a sacrificial church. They provided for, for they provided for Paul when he was in need. And that is why he released such a prayer for them that the Lord will supply all their needs. So you realize that it wasn't said to every church, it was said to the church that were sacrificial. So the altar of sacrifice. It's essential for our ability to get provision from the Lord. And time like, in times of fasting like this, it is a time to know. Because when you look at some uh, Isaiah 58, when the Lord began to talk about the kind of fast that he accept. The kind of fast that he accept. Amen. Let's look at it. He said... Okay, let's start. Say, cry aloud, spare not, lift thy voice. Go to verse 5 for me. He said, Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day of a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Would thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? So, so some of you think that this is the kind of fast that God accepts when you afflict your soul. You don't eat. I know you are not eating. And then you look some way because you feel like that is fast. You put the ashes and sackcloth on you and you uh, sit there and you think that that is the kind of fast that God accepts. No, he began to go to verse 6. He said, is it not this the fast that I have chosen? That the Lord said that this is the kind of fast that I have chosen. What is it? To lose the bounds of wickedness. And so in those days, if you are a, a, you have a slave under you, you have to release them, in a sense. He said to lose the bound of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. Let them go free. And that he break every yoke. No, it doesn't stop there. He said, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. So bringing the poor to your house. Casting your bread. Giving your bread. Dealing with your bread to the hungry. Those that are hungry, you are feeding them. So he's talking about generosity. You have to be generous. And you must be more given in times of fasting. That is the kind of fast that the Lord accepts. Amen. He said, when thou see the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh somebody say mercy say mercy mercy say mercy say mercy, say mercy. Say mercy. and so there is a requirement we cannot do a fast 
the first one that I read, just a sackcloth and, and putting your soul under distress and wanting food but you can't eat and it makes you feel like you are highly spiritual. And that's not the kind of fast that the Lord says he has chosen. Amen. Now, uh, he said that you must give to the poor, feed the hungry, you must bring them to your house, you must cover the naked, clothe the naked. So it's more giving, 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 giving. Even after releasing, releasing of this oppressed is also part of giving. You are releasing people. Even though may, they may own you something, you release them. Amen. And so you have to understand that the Bible is a book of covenant. The scriptures, the Bible you are holding, is a book of covenant. The word testament also means covenant. So we have the old covenant and the new covenant. The old testament and the new testament. Somebody said a covenant. Covenant. So that means there's no provision without condition attached. There is no provision of God without a condition. I will lie to you, we can pray and fast. And we cry, deal with the demons of poverty. But I'm telling you, if you want to break through financially, and if you want God to be your provider, there is always, there is always a condition. There's always a condition. This one, the church don't like too much. And that is why the church is not making waves when it comes to finances. All the other religion, especially the Islam, you realize that they, they got money and they are more given because they, within their, their Ramadan, when they do their fast, there's a day after they finish that they give like crazy. If you have a Muslim friend, there's a specific time that they give. They cook food. They fulfill what Isaiah is saying here. So if you're in the neighborhood, you realize that they will make a big feast and they'll be giving gifts. I knew a Hindu when I was working at Wall Street. There was a Hindu co-worker. They, will, they, they, they say that after they finish their fast, they will invite people to their house to have a party and they will wrap gifts for everyone that is coming. Now, where in Christianity do you see, do you get such testimonies? This is a problem with the church. But the Lord said, through, my, through prosperity in my kingdom, my church will expand. But where is the prosperity? How come we are not obeying the conditions that are attached to our prosperity? May the Lord have mercy on us. Yes, and may the Lord give us insights yes, Lord. and revelation so that we will not perish. So there's no provision without condition attached. Even as free as salvation is. Look at salvation. Jesus did it all for you. But you know that not everyone can just get up and be saved. There's a condition to be saved. Don't you have to accept him as, a Lord, as your Lord and Savior before you can be saved? Don't you have to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth? Somebody said there's a condition. It's a condition. So there's a condition with every provision. Every provision. May the Lord help us, church. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And there is no provision in this covenant book of the Bible without a condition to be met. We saw that several times in the scriptures, the heroes that have gone ahead of us. And we will go over them today in Jesus' name. Jesus name. And I pray today that the Lord will cause you to break every limit. Yes, Lord. Financial limits. Jesus move you to another level when it comes to your uh, your prosperity jesus. and when it comes to your finances yes, Lord. in the name of jesus in the name of jesus as more for the church the body of christ we are supposed to command wealth through prosperity through prosperity my kingdom shall expand through prosperity we are supposed to be expanding and commanding wealth Amen. Amen. There are certain nations you're hearing that they are turning now churches to mosques. How can that be? Because the church don't have money to pay. So now, the so-called unbeliever you think, now how can they have the money to buy your church and turn it to a mosque? What an embarrassment. Yes. May every mindset of poverty Jesus. be broken off you from today. Broken telling you the enemy fights us because 
he knows that we are the one that are rightfully we rightfully deserve it and god has given it to us so that is why he fight the church of christ when it comes to the area of finances when it comes to it may we move to another level today say i will move to another level to another level. Say, I'll move to another level. I'll move to another level. Say, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Today. Today. Give me insight. Give me insight. About the secrets. About the secrets. Of, prosperity. of prosperity. Of prosperity. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Show me the way. Show me the way. Moses knew the ways. The children of Israel, they were just hearing the testimonies. They were seeing the signs and wonders. But they didn't know they didn't know how to provoke the sign and a wonder. <laughs> May you be a provoker of a sign and a wonder. Yes, Lord. May the Lord cause you to provoke wealth. Yes, Lord. Well, may you command wealth. Yes, Lord. May you command prosperity yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus. Look what he says here in Psalm 50, verse 5 and 6. He said, Gather my saints. Do I have saints here? Yes. He said, gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. <laughs> Today the Lord wants to separate the wheat from the tares. Jesus. He said, there's a gathering that I want. I want those that have made a covenant. Remember, a covenant is two parts. Right? He said, those that have made a covenant with me by a sacrifice gather them and today we are here to gather those saints yes, lord. may you be part of the number yes lord i say may you be part of the number yes lord in the name of jesus in the name of jesus and then he moved to verse six look at verse six he said and the heaven shall declare his righteousness for god is judge himself seller do you know what that means it means that I will declare my righteousness on your sacrifice, on your altar of sacrifice. If you do it, the heavens will declare my righteousness on it. That means I will stand by it. I will defend it. I will commit my integrity to it. To make sure that that altar produces what I have commanded. What I have commanded. So that means that all the promises that I have when it comes to uh, giving sacrifices, I will be able, I will stand on that sacrifice to make sure that those promises come to pass. God is willing to put his name on the line. He said, and the heavens shall declare. Today, oh, 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 may the heavens declare yes, the Lord. righteousness of God yes, upon Lord. your all town sacrifice yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He said, God is judged himself. He put himself under judgment. And he says, seller, think about that. Don't rush. Stay here. Let's meditate. It's heavy. He's willing to put his name on the line. On your altar of sacrifice. Don't allow the enemy to take you out. Uh -huh. if, you, <laughs> if you know people's story, listen, God does not just get up and raise. I'm telling you. There are, there, are, there, are, there are conditions people have met. And he will always test you with a condition. If you are not willing to pay that price, you will stay where you are. Today, may the Holy Ghost touch your heart. Say, Spirit of the Lord, touch my heart. Touch Open my, heart. my eyes. Open Give me insights. Insight. Now, what is in the altar of sacrifice what is in there psalm 126 verse 2 to 4 what is in there when you offer the altar of sacrifice this is what happened to you bible said that uh, uh, go back to verse 1 again he said when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dreamt this is when god began to turn your captivity when you when you enter the altar of sacrifice your captivity will turn that's what people say. E, is that Dominic? Wow, is that him? The guy that was begging for money. Jesus. The one that didn't have anything. 
The one that didn't have a car. The one that his car could not reverse. His car could not reverse. The one that, if it was not by mercy, his wedding tablecloth would have been those plastic things. Jesus. Amen. Somebody said, altar of sacrifice. Altar your of captivity sacrifice. changes. Yes. My God. Today, may the Lord change your captivity. Yes, Lord. Oh, may he change your captivity. Yes, he said, Lord. when the Lord turned, he turned. He turned it. He turned it around. The captivity of Zion. We were like them that dream. Number two. Go to number two. He said, then was our mouth full with laughter. That's where we begin to laugh. Before we were crying, now we laugh. I said, we were crying, now we do what? Laugh. And our tongue was singing. This is when you come and you start waving your handkerchiefs and you begin to sing and dance. And people may not understand. They don't know what has happened. They're like, hey, how did it happen? It was just, we were the same. We went to the same school. The same school. I, I, that was my sister. How come she's going on and I'm not going on? They begin to cry because, you know, they, don't, they have not done what you have done. They have not done what you have done. Today you must climb up to that mountain. Yes. The mountain of sacrifice. sacrifice. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then, it's the Bible said, and, and then, say, then say they among the hidden. So the people in the world, they will be saying, the Lord has done great things for them all. AKFT. Jesus. The Lord has done great things for them all, but they don't know the Jesus. sacrifice that has gone in. Jesus. They have no idea. All they see is, oh, they're buying five million dollar properties. All they see is that the church is growing. They have no idea. The altar of sacrifice. The heathen, they will say. How not people be saying all kinds of things? They think that we have, been, we have gone some, 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 some magic. Somebody said altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. Kalabasu katalabasas. Altar. Of sacrifice. of sacrifice gather unto me gather gather unto me gather unto me my saints those that have gone into a covenant with me by a sacrifice today may you be gathered yes lord in the name of jesus in the name of jesus verse four verse four verse three let's go to verse three he said the lord have done this great thing for us wherefore we are glad Wherefore we are glad. Whereof we are glad. You will say, hey Lord, you have done this great thing. Me that was broke. Me that was so single more than a dollar bill. Now look at my life. Look at my family. Look at my children. Look at my house. Look at the pool. Look at the yard. Look at all this thing, the properties. You, you look around and you say, the Lord had done great things. Lord. For us. Yes, Lord. Whereof? We are glad. You will be glad. Don't, don't skip this altar. I'm telling you today. Don't skip it. He said, the Lord has done great things. Yes, Lord. It will be your story. Yes. Uh, I say it will be your testimony. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then he jumped to verse 4. Verse 4. He said, turn again our captivity. O Lord, us. The streams in the south. Turn it. Turn it. Today, as you step at that altar, yes, Lord. May the Lord turn again. Yes, Lord. Your captivity. Yes. May He turn it again. Yes, Lord. May the Lord turn again your captivity. Yes, Lord. May the Lord turn again your captivity. Yes. May the Lord turn. Turn. Kalamasa. Paloma In Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 6. The altar of sacrifice. And the ark, verse 6, 15, Deuteronomy 15, Deuteronomy 15, verse 6. He said, For the Lord thy God blessed thee <laughs> as he promised thee, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, but thou shalt not borrow, and thou shalt reign over many nations, yes, Lord. many nations, yes, but Lord. they shall not reign over thee. Jesus. The Lord thy God 
God. He blessed thee as he has promised. And you shall lend unto many nations. Yes, Lord. And thou shall not borrow. borrow. Ah, it is possible not to borrow. Oh, I say it is possible, it is possible. not to borrow, to buy things in millions. It is possible to buy an airplane cash. It is possible to buy million dollar properties with cash. It is possible. Somebody say it is possible. It is possible. Because the law says so. Yes. He said it. Within five years in this work. Now, how many churches, how many men of God are there doing the same work we are doing? That within five years before the fifth year we were buying a land Jesus. of 1.5 million dollars when we go to our sixth year we buying a whole church building after the 1.5 a whole church building for five million dollars Jesus. going into the seventh year you buy a land property for 130 acres in america That used to be owned by the first governor of the state of Maryland. A historic slave land with a retreat center attached. Mm. You see what is happening here? All before the seven years old. All before seven years. Now, how is that possible? He said, Thou shalt not borrow. This is a covenant right here that is holding this ministry. That he said, we shall lend to many nations. We shall not borrow. That is your will. That, that is the will of God for you. May the Lord move you to that dimension. Yes, Lord. I say, may he move you to that dimension. Yes, Lord. For the Lord your God blessed thee. As he promised thee. Thou shalt lend unto many nations. But thou shalt not borrow. And thou shalt reign over many nations, but they shall not reign over thee. You will be on tough. After the altar of sacrifice, you yes, will be Lord. on tough. Lord. Say, I will be on tough. I will be on In the tough. name of Jesus. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. He said, But thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth hmm. oh, say amen again amen that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto your fathers as it is in this day now please get this scripture right or well, some of you just get the first part but you don't get the second part he said it is the lord thy god that blessed thee it is he that what Give you power to make wealth, to get wealth. But the wealth is not for you. It is in line of his agenda on earth. So that his covenant to be what? Established. So anyone who doesn't desire the establishment of God's kingdom is not qualified for the wealth God, God gives. And it is the blessings of the Lord that make it one rich, one rich and it has no sorrow. So if you want the riches that come with no sorrow, then you must have the heart that God has concerning this earth. He said to establish his covenant here. To advance his kingdom. So the money you have is not for you. So when he requires it, when he is requiring it from you, why are you withholding? There's nothing that you have that he didn't give you. All the money you save, if one, one sickness attack you right now, Jesus. the money is gone. You, you don't have that. You don't have anything. You don't have it. So, so don't sit there and say, mm, this thing that I've saved. You saved what? It is he that gets you. He gives you power to get wealth. For his covenant's sake. For the establishment of his kingdom. Here, you must be kingdom minded to qualify for the wealth. Somebody say kingdom. Kingdom. Minded. Yeah, you must. 
And so don't say, well, God, I just want to acquire all this money for myself and my kids. No. You have the wrong mind. Today, may the Lord change your mind and start thinking about kingdom. Yes, Lord. Kingdom. kingdom. In Matthew 6, 33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, all this that others are dying for, they're laboring for, shall be added. It's an add-on. Add -on. He has it. That one you don't ask. He has it. He has it. He has it. He has it. I remember even the land, the 130 acres, we never asked for that. There were people that were begging. Well, after we bought it, and people sent letters begging to have it. There are people that they, they discovered it late. The Lord hid it from everyone. Why? It was an added because He knew our heart for His kingdom. You understand that? The heart is kingdom minded. So everything we have, what we have is the kingdom, is the church. Honestly. So that mindset alone. There are several times we've traveled to go and minister some places. When they give us an honorarium, we give it back to them. Because we see that the, the people are struggling to even buy the ticket and the little money they get, we, why are we taking it? The kingdom mind, I said, Lord, so use it to, to push the, 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 the ministry. Use it for the program next year. Not coming to drain from you. I'm coming to push the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. When you carry such a heart, Oh, he adds on. Somebody say he adds. He adds. He adds. Somebody was saying to me, he said, Ha, ah, you take five million dollars to go buy a church. Why you didn't start a business for your family? You, 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 you don't get there are people that the Lord has given the money to, but they use it for something else. He said, for the establishment. For the establishment he said the promise that i gave to your father so that it, be, it may be established so i'm giving you the money i'm opening the door for you to get the job i'm opening the door for you to start that business i'm causing increase in that business so when you get the money don't forget that i gave it to you for the establishment of my kingdom it is me that gives you power to get wealth so that my kingdom will be established so don't forget about that kingdom aspect else you will, your name will be cancelled today from those that are entitled for the wealth in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say, God, God, empower me. Empower me. Say, empower me. Empower me. May the Lord give you that power yes, Lord. to get wealth yes. in the name of Jesus. 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 So God wants to empower his church for the end time assignment. He wants you to be rich. He wants you to be wealthy. So that the church can expand and souls can be won. That is his will. Get on board with him. I say, get on board with him. Board. With all the money that uh, Steve Jobs got, where is it now? Where is he? So it's not about you acquiring money and becoming the bigger, the billionaire. You can die. Cancer can take you out. Cancer. Cancer. High blood pressure can take you out. Diabetes can take you out. HIV can take you out. You ask yourself, why are you not sick like, like, sick like some people? You know there are some millionaires out there, they can't sleep. Mm. It's true. Because for them, it was just about that. But if you are kingdom mindset, why will God take you out? Know that it's through you that his kingdom will establish. So the altar of sacrifice comes with so much benefits. Yes. Somebody says so much benefits. So much benefits. May the Lord open your eyes to see them. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Now, when it comes to the auto sacrifice, some of you say, Well, I suppose you know I'm not, I'm not working now. And I, right now I just make a little bit of money. So I, I, when I get money, you see, that's where you're wrong. Mercy. It's not when you get money. Go to Genesis chapter chapter 13, verse 14, I believe. Uh, Genesis. 13 14 let me see he said and the lord said unto abraham abraham after that lord separated from him he said lift up now lift up now thine eyes and look from the place where thou art somebody said the place where i am the place where I it am. start from where you at it start from the level where you are 
don't try to go say when i when i make it we are tired that's an excuse that's an excuse out of that ten dollars if you can give god some or you can give it to god then when you have the hundred it will be easy to give but if you can't give ten when you have ten do you think you will give a million when you have a million it will not happen so it, it is a matter of the heart somebody said the heart uh -huh. so god says start from where you are say i will start from where am i i will start in the name of jesus the name of jesus now haggai chapter 1 verse 3 to 11. Haggai. He says, and then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? <laughs> and this and this house lie waste. God is asking a question. He said, You, 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 your, your house, there's a ceiling. You seal it nicely. When it rain, you are safe. Is it, he said, is it time for you that you you dwell in such a house? And the house in my house and this house lie waste that's a question he said now therefore that says the lord of hosts consider your ways today the lord said consider your ways you check the way you be moving why six he said you have sworn you, you have so much that means you planted you working hard you so much, but you bring in little. How many of you can testify about that? Yeah. You, 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 you put in so much hours. By the end of the month, you just have a little, 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 little. The Lord said, consider your ways. He said, but you have not enough. You, you work so hard, but there's not, there's not much. He said, you eat, but you have not enough. You eat it, but it's like the food is not enough. What is happening? I'm working, but it's not enough. He said, you drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe, but there is none warm. Like the clothes doesn't even warm you up. And he said, and he, and he, he said that, he that earned wages, earned wages to put into a bag full of holes. So for you, not, getting a job is not a problem. But all the money you are getting, you put in a bag that is full of holes. Amen. Amen. Go to the next verse. Now, that saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways again. Twice. Somebody say twice. Say, he's warning me to consider my ways. Go to the next verse. He said, go up. Now, go up. Going up is not easy. But he must go. He said, go up. Work hard to the mountains and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it. And I will be glorified, see as the Lord. The Lord said, Now, you go and work hard. Climb the mountain. Climbing a mountain is not easy. When you climb in a mountain, it's hard. You sweat. He said, Go on top of the mountain. Take wood. Use that wood not for your own, but build my house first. When you build the house, I, the Lord, will take pleasure in the house. And I will be glorified. Now, look what he said in the next verse. He said, you look for much, and lo, it came too little. When, when you brought it home, I did blow on it. Why? Say as the Lord of hosts, because of my house, that is waste. And you run every man unto his own house. The Lord said, as long as my house is not being taken care of, I will blow away all your, blood, your finances. Jesus. I will destroy it. So seek ye first. So Jesus came back and told you the secret of the kingdom is that the secret is that if you want to be wealthy in the kingdom you must seek the kingdom first god said my you have nice houses but my house lie waste they lie waste they lie waste and you will expect me to bless you go to the next verse he said, therefore, the heavens over you is stayed from dew. That means the dew that was supposed to fall upon your life for your life to bring forth. He said, I will stay there. I will block it. And the earth is stayed from its fruits. And he said, the earth will not yield its fruit to you. The next. 
and I call for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the oil and upon which that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men and upon cattle and upon all the labor of the oh upon all the labor of your hands the Lord said that I will call a drought mercy seize it next next verse then Zerubbabel the son of Sheetah and Joshua the son of Joseph the high priest with all the remnant of the people obeyed the voice of <laughs> they obeyed when the Lord spoke they knew that they, are, they were in danger the Bible said they obeyed the voice of their God and the, the, and the words of the Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God has sent him and, and the people did fear before the Lord the next verse then speak Haggai the Lord's messenger in the Lord's message unto the people saying I am with you saith the Lord the moment they obeyed the Lord said I will be with you that means that even in the labor I will be there to help you yes. if you make up your mind to be a kingdom minded person to seek that the kingdom is advanced in your workplace God will be with you God will begin to open some doors because your heart is for his kingdom so you, be, you, you go into partnership with him so in your job you are partners with God mm. in your business you are partners with God mm. he work with you to make sure that you succeed and you become wealthy in the name of Jesus Christ oh, Jesus. say Lord help me Lord help me say Lord help me Lord help me say Lord help me Lord help me So commitment to kingdom advancement will always lead to financial explosion. Commitment to kingdom advancement will always lead to financial explosion. When you commit to the kingdom advancement, financially you will explode. Now what does the altar of sacrifice offer? What does the altar of sacrifice offer? Number one, the altar of sacrifice offer... Um, in Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 to 21, you will understand that the first altar we saw, the altar of sacrifice was in this chapter here. The Bible said, Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl and offered burnt offering unto the Lord. And what happened in verse 21? And the Lord smelled a sweet savor and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore every living thing as I have done. So a curse or a generational curse ended when an altar of sacrifice was offered. Do you remember that the earth was cursed? The Lord, by the leading of, uh, by, by Noah offering. Now, how did, was it an offering? Uh, how was that a sacrifice? You see, remember, all the animals that went into the ark were in pairs. A male, female, male, female, male, female. Now, how do you now take the male? Even if you use the male to sacrifice, that means that that, that um, what is it? The lineage of that animal comes to an end. So it was a sacrifice. The animals he used, it was a sacrifice. It was ending a whole lineage. So it wasn't something that was extra. It wasn't the, the surplus. It was something that would hurt to do. So those animals that he used, Bible said clean animals he used to offer. And the Lord had to smell it because hmm, the generation has ended. The bank is empty. That is when you know. You, you, you see, you don't know what sacrifice is. Sometimes we say, oh, sacrifice, somebody come here. It's a little one dollar that was in their pocket. Sure. You, you, you want to know what a sacrifice is? You want to reach the realm of wealth? He will require something from you. The moment... Noah offered that sacrifice. 
the curse broke the Lord said mm. he smelled and said mm, this one is heavy a whole lineage of animals are, have been used to sacrifice for, for me it wasn't a surplus it was an ending emptying their account he said after he smelled he said I will not again curse I'm, oh, I'm, not, I'm not cursing I'm not cursing and went into a covenant and came up with a rainbow that anytime the rainbow comes the Lord will remember up to now that covenant is still speaking else the Lord would have destroyed us if it wasn't Noah's sacrifice the Lord all this nonsense that is going on here he would have destroyed us by rain already recently there was a storm in New York City and people didn't know how to act end it but you see that as the, when it's raining too much anytime there's too much rain all of a sudden you see a rainbow just show up the Lord is reminded of his covenants else we would have been dead it was because a man did a sacrifice he entered the altar of sacrifice and ended a generational curse perpetually perpetually up to now in your days you see rainbow it started from Noah it started from Noah you can end the generational curse today by an altar of sacrifice you can end I say you can end a generational curse May the Lord cause you to end a generational curse. May every curse break in the name of Jesus. Break. May every curse break. Break. Number two. An altar of, so the first thing, altar of sacrifice break curses. You can write that down. Number two. Altar of sacrifice entitles, entitles you for a sworn blessing. God swears his blessing on you. Why? Why? Even when you want to be poor, it will be too late for you because they have, they, he has sworn by himself, by his name, to make sure that you are rich. It happened to Abraham. Somebody say Abraham. Say Abraham. Let's go to Genesis chapter 22. Genesis 22. He said, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Somebody said tempt. Now, why would why God tempt Abraham? You, you're the one that promised him a child you promise him a child now you are tempting him with a child this is the condition somebody say condition now remember when the lord called me say abraham i'll make you great and he said oh the lord said, i'll be great oh yes i'll be great i'll be great i'll be great i'll be great yeah he blessed him a little bit he didn't know that all those blessings were waiting for one one more one more one more test bless him with money bless him and because his heart was a child bless him with one child Isaac from Sarah the one that she loved the one that he loved he loved Sarah so he loved Sarah's son see if the husband don't love you they would not love the children no. that's why some of you it's not like your father don't love you he didn't love your mom so he got children somewhere that he's taking care of but then you look at yourself why my, why my dad never took care of me I'm just trying to help you to understand. <laughs> Amen. You see, the truth hurts. But it's not you, it's your mom. So it's not me. It's not me. Because where is Ishmael in this situation? It's like Ishmael is lost. Like he's out. But Isaac was the main price. And so the Lord said, I will tempt Abraham. Because I want to now move him to that generational wealth. I want him to move to a level of wealth where he begin to learn to nations. Where he begin to be in command of nations. So now, let me test him. This was the test. He said, he said, Abraham. And he said, behold, here I am. <laughs> be careful not to respond quickly, Abraham. Look what happened. And he said, take now your son. Your only son, Isaac, whom you love. So the Lord doesn't want the one you don't love. Church, he wants the one you love. So you have sons, but the one that you love is one I want. And get thee into the land of Moriah. And offer him there for a burnt offering. Hmm? Upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. What an encounter. 
And he said, take now, move quickly with me, whoever is behind it. And Abraham rose up early in the morning. So the guy, he didn't wait for the evening. He didn't wait for the afternoon. He woke up. So out of the vision at night, woke up at 5 a.m. Early in the morning. Some of you would have been delayed. Today, when the Lord touches your heart, you got to move quickly. I remember when I went to when the Lord began to require things from us, I've never sold, we've never sold $10,000 before. <laughs> Went to a program, the Lord said $10,000. I said, wait. And it wasn't our, it's not like your church. <laughs> it's somewhere else. So I told myself, if I leave this place, it may be impossible for me to fulfill this vow. So you know what? I gave them my debit card. I said, go ahead. They went and they denied, like they denied it because they have never seen that much money come out of the account like that. <laughs> and then um, I called the bank right there. I said, I'm not leaving this place until you guys approve this transaction. Because I knew in my spirit, if I leave this place, I will act like that thing never happened. <laughs> and some of you have been acting like you have never made a vow. Mercy. Hey, that vow is still on your head though until you fulfill it you you know you know the lord will always come for you amen so abraham woke up early in the morning quickly took the child Bible said he woke up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went on to the place of which god had told him very obedient then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham said unto his young man, Abide ye here with these eyes. And I and the lad, talking about Isaac, the young man, will go yonder and worship. And come again to you. That means that sacrifice also worship. Sacrifice your part is your act of worship. Amen. Uh -huh. And, and so he said, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father. The Lord made sure that he put father there. Imagine a father and your son look at you and say, my father. And he said, here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Where is it? I can imagine what Abraham was going through. I can imagine. Because I have sons, so I know. Imagine going to sacrifice your son. Go to the next verse. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering so they went both of them together so this abraham guy his faith is something else he said we're going we're going to do this we, we're not going to waste time he said god will provide god will provide today we are talking about provision he said god will provide Jehovah Jireh, God will provide. He will provide. He will provide. And they went. Let's go. And they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. My goodness. Remember, there's nothing you give to God that does not come from an altar altars are the ways to communicate to spirits okay so to offer a sacrifice an altar has to be built and then you place a sacrifice on it so he built an altar and tied his hand the hand of um he said abraham tied the hand of isaac and the feet and laid him down like a, like a, how you sacrifice a, a lamb and abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. The guy loves God. Abraham loved God. No, no, no. The wife was not going to interfere. The child was not going to interfere. That's why he never told the wife. For him, it was God first before a wife. 
So this was not a discussion that I'm going to discuss with you. My God, I've told me this and I'm doing it. He stretched off his hand, about to kill. Because the moment he get a woman involved, this thing will collapse. And, and just like the same thing with Adam, it collapsed. They, they would have shut it down. Hey, where are you going? This do- At the age of 90, I pushed this child out. Where are you going with him? Abraham, where are you going? So he woke up before Sarah got woke up. Took the child out. So we're going to offer this sacrifice by fire, by force. The Bible said the moment he stretched forth his hand, all of a sudden, it did, within his heart, he had already killed his son. God saw in the spirit that Abraham has offered the child. And then the angel of the Lord spoke. Called Abraham. He called unto him up, out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham and he said here I am here am I go to the next verse and he said lay not thy hand upon the lad neither do anything unto him for now I know that thou fearest that you fearest God now I know that you fear God seeing that thou hast not withheld your son my only son from me. <laughs> this, is, this is serious. <laughs> you want to tap into wealth? Hmm. You are not ready. No, 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 you are not ready. He said, now I know Abraham that you fear me. Before, I guessed. But today, I know. May the, Lord, may, the Lord, may the Lord know you. He said, I know. And then he went on again. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in the thickets by his, tongue, by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. God provided there. And verse 14, what did Abraham say? And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. Oh, you have not gotten what I just said. You want provision. Provision is on that mountain where sacrifices are offered. That is where the provision is. If you are not willing to climb up on, on top of that mountain, you will not see God's provision. That is what he just said. He said, on that mountain, on the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. So today God is calling us. You want provision, come to the mountain. Come to the altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. Somebody say altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. The Lord spoke. So he swore. And he didn't finish. So after this, go to the next verse. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. So after th- all this, he called him again. Look about the blessings he's about to release upon him. And said, and said, and said, this is when God began to swear. He said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and has not withheld thy son, thy only son. Uh, whoever is behind this, move quickly for me. That in blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply thy seed. You see, now in blessing, he said, I will bless thee. And in multiplying. So then, this is a different level of blessing. He said, he said now I swear by myself. There's no one else greater than me. And so I'm swearing by my own self that you, in blessing, I'll bless thee. Even if you want to be broke, in blessing, I'll bless thee. It's a swear. I swear. I swear that in blessing, I'll bless thee. And you want multiplication? Because you only have one child here. I got you. In multiplying, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven and as the sun of this, as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. So this sacrifice was not just for him. 
it affected his seed. Yeah. You can do something that can change poverty. It can end poverty in your generation. I'm telling you. You must, I pray that today God will give you light. Because you see, when he wants to catch that light, nobody can deny you of it. Receive revelation. A blessing. He said, Thy seed shall possess the gate of the enemy. And go to the verse 18. And in thy seed, now, he moved to another, in your seed, Abraham, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. So, so if I'm going to bless the nations of the earth, I will use you to, want, to be the one to bless them. That is the covenant I'm going in. That is what I'm swearing on you because of the altar of sacrifice. Now, Abraham has sacrificed many times. It, was, it didn't provoke such utterances from the Lord. So you're giving certain givings, but there's a one that when you give, God will know that you love him. God will swear a blessing on you, that in blessing he will bless you. And in multiply, he will multiply, and your seed shall be blessed. Your posterity will be okay. The next generation, you don't have to worry, because it goes beyond you. So altar of sacrifice will provoke a sworn blessing. It will entitle you for a sworn blessing. So every genuine sacrifice secures a sworn blessing. If you truly sacrifice, it will secure a sworn blessing. Receive grace to move in that dimension. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. So number one, number two is what? It, it entitles you to a sworn blessings. And number three, it secures your posterity. It says in your seed, in your seed shall all the nations be blessed. And said your seed. So he began to address the seed. You see, more the blessing was going to the seed. Your seed, your seed, your seed, your seed. What you are doing is not just for you. It's for those children. You see, the enemy also does the same. That's because the reason why some of us, we are struggling. Because our forefathers did some things which is affecting us. It's our seed that get affected. So today, you also start something new. Be a patriarch. Be a matriarch. And start something. Start a new order in that family. Raise an altar of sacrifice. And end someone say end and the patterns and the generational curse and also the poverty that is in your family and let the next generation begin to move forward in jesus name jesus in jesus name jesus name in jesus name jesus name name. somebody say altar altar of sacrifice sacrifice Say altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. Altar of sacrifice. So it secured the posterity. His posterity was secured as a result of the altar of sacrifice. Abraham didn't have to worry about his children. He didn't. He saw the blessings. And sometimes look at Jacob. Look, look at this this guy Jacob, still in his his. his <laughs> He's still in his brother's blessing. On his way, the Lord revealed himself to him. That I'm, I'm, the, I'm the God of your fathers. Because grandfather had labored. And so God was not just going to reject him. God was not going to reject him. So even when your children go away, what? Because of your altar of sacrifice, God will bring them back to divine alignment. I'm telling you. God brought Jacob to divine alignment. He said, when you come back, come and serve me here. Sacrifice here. Call this place Bethel. He came back, he encountered God. God changed his name. If anything, he should have died by stealing from his brother. But he changed his name, changed his identity, and called him a prince. And you are no longer a thief, but you are a prince. He saw his brother. The brother couldn't even know. He didn't know who he met. His countenance has changed. All because a grandfather called Abraham offered at the altar of sacrifice. He said, on this mountain, on this mount, the provisions of God shall be seen. The provisions of God is not going to be seen at the valley where there is no sacrifice. You must climb onto the altar and the mountain 
and offer a sacrifice that would touch God's heart in order for that provision to be seen. My God, now you understand what Paul said, that my God shall supply all your needs because the Philippian church touched him by giving to him even when they didn't have. The Bible said they gave out of their lack. You are waiting to have before you can give. There are people that are giving when they don't have. And those are the people that he takes care of. And at and, and the end of the year, say, ah, how did I survive? You gave so much that you look at your life and say, how, how I didn't get evict, evicted? How was I able to pay all these bills? My God shall supply all. Somebody say, all your needs. Oh, my say, needs. all my needs. All my needs. May all your needs be provided for. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. I'm gonna give one more and then we close. Number four, it averts plagues. Somebody say plagues. Plagues. Say plagues. Plagues. Second Samuel chapter 24 verse 18. This is when David made a mistake when he encountered the people of God. God got mad. He began to kill the people. A plague entered Israel, and people were dying. And the prophet of God came to David and said, David, I have the secret. I'm going to give you the secret. You see, sometimes when people are giving you the secret, don't, don't run away from it. He said, and God came that day to David and said unto him, he said, go up. You see, any time, <laughs> because altar, the altar has to always be raised up. Altars are not supposed to be there. It's raised Someone says raise. So he said, Go up, rear an altar. So don't stay here. Get up there. Go on the mountain. Rear an altar. Build an altar. In the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusites. And David, according to the saying of God, the prophet, went up as the Lord commanded. And Aruna looked and saw the king and his servant coming on towards him. And Aruna went out and bowed himself before the king on his face upon the ground. And Aruna said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? And David said, To buy the threshing floor of thee and to build an altar upon it unto the lord that the plague may be stayed from the people. Without the sacrifice, there's no plague ending. And the guy said, look what the guy, so David said, I came here so that I can buy your land, so that I can build an altar on it, to sacrifice so that the plague will end. And look what happened here. And Aruna said unto David, let my lord, the king, take and offer up what seemeth good unto him. Behold, here be oxen for burnt, us, burnt sacrifice, and a threshing instrument on the other instruments of the accent. Give me the NIV for this particular one, verse 22. So that you can see exactly what is happening here. He said, And Aruna said unto David, Let my lord the king take whatever he wishes and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offering, and here are the threshing sledges and axe yoke for the wood. Some of you will think that you have hit the jackpot. That the guy said, hey, I have all this. Take it. Sacrifice it. Sacrifice it. But look what happened here. Look what David said. He said, your majesty, Aruna gives all this thing to the king. Aruna also said to him, may the Lord your God accept you. And then the next verse. But the king replied. David knew something. The king replied to Aruna. He said, no, I insist on paying for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God. Burnt often that cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of, of silver for them. Listen, a sacrifice is not a sacrifice if it doesn't cost you. sacrifice it's not a sacrifice 
if it will not cost you. You are saying the Lord said, give $100,000. <laughs> Multiple times. Because you have left the realm of 10000 Because 10000 will be nothing. You do that, that's your monthly bill. So that's not a sacrifice. When you reach a realm where God said, give me a million. Ah. Yeah. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. David said, it has to cost you. It has to cost you. Averting a plague. I was going through a plague. And I'm not, I'm not saying go and do the same thing. Then I caught the revelation. I was going through a plague of spiritual marriages and my life stagnant and nothing. I mean, nothing was moving. Interviews come up, nothing going on. Do, 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 do. Everything was hijacked. And one day the Lord said, empty your bank account. At that time, all that I had in my name was 1,500 or so. Empty it. Now, it may seem nothing now. Because that's what the Bible says, start from where you at. You see, start from where you at. At that time, 1,500 was gold. That's all I was living on. I was living in one room, paying $500 a month. I budgeted that within the three months, that is the money I'm going to use to pay the rent. The Lord said, sacrifice. I was sitting there like some of you. Okay. It was a morning session like today. How we do morning sessions. We finished the morning session. I said, okay, thank God. I went to the hotel. And the Holy Spirit keep dealing with me. I said, I missed this opportunity. I hope that we come back. And so we were coming back at night. And I was praying to the Lord, Lord, when we come back, please let him call back again. He went to the service. And the man of God, after ministry, said, the Lord said, he's giving some people second chance to empty their bank account. My good, I was the first one to get up. I had my checkbook with me, signed the entire 1500. Now, I'm back to zero, literally. I have no more money. I didn't, I didn't even have money to, to buy for gas to come back home. Because I was in Virginia when that happened. So the Lord giving us a land in that same area is highly prophetic. I was there when it happened. And guess what? Even the day after I gave the money, I got a call. All of a sudden I got a call that is an interview here in Greenwich, Connecticut for a company called something capital. It was a hedge fund. And guess what? The day I received the call, I went to sleep. And the same spiritual wife or whoever came and did whatever they do, they do to me so that whatever I go, when I go to interviews, it doesn't work. I had those encounters in the dream. So I woke up and said, hmm, this thing again. I thought this thing will avert the curse. I was so discouraged. I didn't even want to go to the interview. I spoke to a man of God. He said, let's pray. Just, just go, just go. So I didn't even prepare for the interview. And when I was coming, somebody gave me like $200 to buy gas. So I took it. Came home. Came to New York. I got here Sunday. The next Monday is the interview. Guess what? So the first time I went to the interview, they not really prepared because I knew that, oh, this one is going to be the same story. They will deny me. I will not get a job. I went to the interview. Guess what? Before I got home, they called me that they offered me the job. Now, do you know what that did to my mind? And what that did to the devil? It broke the power of the activities in my life. That for the first time in my life and in their life, they came to do sleep with me and whatever they did did not work. So it actually discouraged them. They never came back. It discouraged them. So, oh, this thing that we did did not work. So, why would we even bother? Because the curse is averted. Because of the sacrifice at that time. Sacrifice. My brother is here. He was with me. If my brother come, he can testify. That day I was with him. Release that sacrifice. I've never forgotten. So, if I stand here, I say, ah, 
I, I, when I'm teaching about sacrifice, I know what I'm talking about. Too. I, I've been, it, it wasn't like I had money and I had other resources. I have like investments that will come in later or a salary that will come in. So at least I can empty and then the next week another $2,000 will hit the account. It wasn't like that. It was all that you ever have. My whole inheritance was in that account. Empty it out. You have nothing. No job. But guess what? The moment I empty, a, a call came. The demon tried. And I got a job. Remember, I got the job now. That can now give me money. To be able to live. And to be able to save. See, if I keep that 1500 the next three months, it will go. And that's it. I'm back. And I'll be crying out, looking for a place to stay. But when I released it, look what God did. It averted the curse. The curse ended. And I was able to work. I pray for you that you will not miss your time. Yes, I pray that your eyes will be open to see when God is speaking to you yes, Lord. that you will not miss it. Yes. May you not miss it. Yes, Lord. May every curse be averted. I say, may every curse be averted in the name of Jesus. 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 There's more, but I'm going to stop here. I'm only giving you half of it. The benefits goes up to about 10 benefits. But I've given you just four. Amen. Averting, averting curses. I have not even touched Solomon yet. No, maybe first lady would continue this tonight for you because I don't want to preach at all and then she has to come and continue but we haven't even touched Solomon and you know what happened there so just these people I've not even touched Job yet I've not touched Isaac and them like there's a mystery here these, these, these soldiers these generals that have gone ahead of it this is how they were able to tap into well David said, I will not give. At the moment he bought it, he offered the sacrifice, the curse ended. The curse ended. It averted the curse. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And so this means that the cost that defines sacrifice is not the volume of it. Because he could have taken everything that Aruna was given. It was a volume gift. That he could have said, I have all this I can sacrifice. It was not the volume. It was not because of the volume of the, 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 the sacrifice. But it was the cost of it. If it does not cost you, it is not valuable before God. So it could be one dollar. And that one dollar will cost you more than somebody giving ten thousand. And that's why when Jesus was standing by the offering bowl, the woman that gave her little coins, Jesus said that she has given more than those people that gave more money because for her, that's all that she had. So start from where you are. Somebody say, where am I? That's where I'm starting from. Don't look at the volume of the money, but the cost, if it does not cost you anything, God does not see it as a sacrifice. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus. In Malachi chapter 1, verse 6 and 8. He said, A son honors his father and a slave his master. If I am a father, says the Lord, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me? Says the Lord Almighty. It is you priests who show contempt for my name but you ask how have you shown contempt for your name next verse ye offer polluted bread upon my altar and you say wherein have we polluted thee in that ye say the table of the lord is contemptible don't offer the pollution don't offer the waste don't bring god what will not cost you God doesn't want that. He doesn't. Don't bring the waste in the church and say, you take it. No. He said, you offer polluted stuff. 
God rejected their offering because it was polluted. It didn't cost them anything. It did not cost them anything. It did not cost them anything. Go to the next verse. Look at the last one. It said, and if you offer the blind, if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? For if you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person? See as the Lord. The things that we bring to the house of God. Can we take the same things to the president and give it to him as a gift? Amen. The Lord said, you, what you are offering me is polluted. You're giving me blind, blind chickens and blind lambs. Lambs with cancer in their body. This is what you present to me. I don't want it. He rejected the offering. But a true sacrifice is one that cost you. Amen. All right. So today, if we really want to tap into provision, if you want to tap into provision, we must climb on the mountain of sacrifice, the altar. We must offer. Today is a day that you must go into a serious covenant. Remember, there is no provision without conditions attached. If you really want to move in the realm of wealth, the Lord will require someone. Amen. Before we personally, uh, my family, move into wealth, God was requiring multiple $10,000 seats, and we never did that before. And several times within the same year, and we didn't understand. I said, but then it made sense after, because right after all those sacrifices, within seven months is when we pay off our, our house, and then we moved into another realm of wealth, which is no debt. That grace came after we paid it off, and then the, all of a sudden the grace of no debt came. So then, everything else, before that 130 acres, he required hundred thousand dollars. Hundred thousand dollars, hundred thousand dollars, hundred kill. Not, not, no, not thousand, hundred. Twice, actually three times, several times. The Lord is required. You're not just going to purchase that and just you sitting here and looking good. No, 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 no. What you are seeing, you think, you think, you think it's your offering. God, how much do you put here? No, how much do you give? Think about it. We were in that little sweat box in 215. How many people can even sit there? For you to get up and say you're buying in the time of COVID. Where there was no church meetings. Where we meet in COVID time. In that new year, when we were about to enter 2021, we came in with the whole land. Paid off. Somebody said this is supernatural. <laughs> if you ask me where the money... <laughs> when God begins to bless you, money, money fly to you. Money fly to you. I pray that you will tap into something today. Today, I want you to go in and offer an altar. Go to the altar of sacrifice today. Today. Some things will break in your life. Generational curse will break. God will swear his blessings on you. In the name of Jesus, may you receive the sworn blessings. Somebody say the sworn blessings. Say the sworn blessings. May it affect your children. In the name of Jesus. And may every plague be averted. May it end the place in your life. May it end the place. I say may it end the place. All the defeats in your life will come to an end. It's not me that backs it up. It's the Lord that backs it up. Remember when he said in Psalm 50 verse 6. Uh, he said that what? He said my righteousness. I will put my, I will put my integrity on your altar of sacrifice. He said, then the heavens shall declare his righteousness. For God is, God judge himself. He judge himself. He put his integrity that today, if you can raise an altar of sacrifice, oh my goodness, this is your word right here. This one, God is the one that you did. He said that my integrity will be upon your altar of sacrifice. 
And so gather unto me, my saints, those that have gone into the covenant with me by a sacrifice. Amen. 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 I want you to be on your feet now. There's more, but God has spoken already. This is for your prophets. When this season comes like this, this is an opportune time to step into a realm. Don't miss it. Do not miss it. You today, you will start from where you are. David said, I will not give anything to the Lord that will not cost me. He said, on that mountain is where the provision of God will be seen. On the mountain. You can't stay in the valley and expect the provision. You can't expect supplies. That the Lord will supply all my needs. Without any giving. Without any condition. The Philippian chest. Go read the book of Philippians. You see what they did to Paul. He, he was touched by their given because they didn't even have and they gave out of their lack don't say I'm waiting to make a million before I do anything start from where you are at today you are going to a covenant you are going and pray today say Lord Lord Holy Spirit give me insights speak to me I remember the Lord spoke to my heart and I couldn't even sit in a hotel room I knew that I must be part of that thing if I miss it my destiny will be hijacked This is the time you go before the Lord. This is the time of the fast. That is, this is the most highly spiritual time for this fast. Because we are tired of being broke. Yeah, you must. You must take this thing personal. One of our brothers here fulfilled their seed of 10,000. He's been in this country for, he never got a job. All of a sudden, the door opened. Now, I believe that God is about to move him into a realm of wealth that he doesn't even know that he tapped into something. All because he fulfilled his vow. Because I knew the day that he brought it, I knew it was a sacrifice. And I pray, say, Lord, let your word be true. Let your word be true. Let your word be true. And God don't need your money. He owns everything. And everything that you have, he gave it to you. So it's about the heart check. Today he's checking your heart. Yes, Lord. So today you are praying. Say, Lord, I want to climb this mountain of, of, of sacrifice. The mountain of provision where Abraham went. That if I'm a daughter of Abraham, if I'm a son of Abraham, then I must do what Abraham did. Today, help me to do what Abraham did in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me to do what David did in the mighty name of Jesus. Help me, O oh Lord. Help me to avert every curse. Help me, help me, help me. Lift up your voice, begin to pray. Pray for help. Pray that the Lord will give you the grace. Somebody, the grace. You need grace. This one, you can't just do it. You need God's grace to be able to climb up, to be able to go up. Go up to that mountain. Go up to that mountain. Go up to that mountain. To that mountain. Today, you must climb up to the mountain, to the altar of sacrifice. Shatara <laughs> Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. May the Lord help us to establish this covenant. Yes, Lord, help us. Help us. Ask the Holy Ghost to speak to you. Ask him to speak to you just like he spoke to Abraham. What is it that the Lord is requiring of you today? 
the Lord will, will give you a certain number he will tell you what to do pray pray that you will hear his voice Bible said Abraham heard his voice he heard him he heard him pray that the Lord will speak to you today pray that the Lord will speak may Jehovah speak may he give you insights may he give you directions as to how and what to do Yes, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord speak to you as he spoke to Abraham. May he speak to you as he spoke to David. That this is the way out. To avert this curse. This is the way out for generational blessings. This is the way to secure your posterity. This is the way to end the generational curse. Noah ended the whole generational curse. A curse that came from Adam was ended because of Noah's sacrifice. You can stop some things today. I said you can stop some things today. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. May the Lord give you the grace to raise an altar of sacrifice. And so today is a day that I really want you to step into that realm. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, it says, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, quickly put it on the screen for me. He said, every man according as he purposed in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loved a cheerful giver. Do you know why he loves a cheerful giver? Because giving is for your own good. It profits you. He doesn't need you to give to him. But spiritual principles are spiritual principles. Today he says, let every man, what you are purpose in your heart, give. Not grudgingly. Don't come here. Come cheerfully because it is profitable for you. There are generational curses that are being broken. You are averting some curses. You are averting some curses. You are securing your posterity. And you are also receiving a sworn blessing. In blessing, I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply your seed. As the stars of heaven. And as the sun of the seashore. What kind of blessing is this? Because you did not withhold. Don't withhold from the Lord. Today, I want you to give a sacrifice. A seed of sacrifice, but you it must come out of your spirit. I really want you to don't just if you if you're not feeling your spirit, don't do it. But I really want you to speak to the Lord and allow. I've given you many, the revelation is here. Can okay, we go back, listen to it until you get it? Come with revelation today. Some stuff must come to an end. Don't casually walk in here with any sacrifice. You have to move here by revelation. By revelation. Some things must come to an end. And you must receive a sworn blessing. Okay? Also start from where you at. Start at your level. Which means that if your level is not a thousand and you do a thousand, it's not, it's not a sacrifice. You see what I'm saying? If your level is not a hundred dollars and you give a hundred dollars, God doesn't see that as a sacrifice. So start at where your level. What is a sacrifice to you? Because a sacrifice, a hundred dollars for you is a sacrifice, but it may not be a sacrifice for me. You understand that? Okay. So today I want to push you. My heart desire is that you will move in that realm. Yes, Lord. Amen. And so please. 
I want you today, and as we come in at 6 p.m. to, to, to end the fast for today, because the topic ends at the 6, maximize this time before the Lord. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. Come with a sacrifice by revelation. Come and release it at the altar and see what God is doing. And place a demand. Everything that I've listed here, at least, and maybe 6 p.m., we will give you more. Come in there, and God will make sure that he, He'll be integral concerning your sacrifice, as His word I've said in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. And so today we are climbing to the mountain and we are going to Jaira. That is where provision will come. Yes, Lord. It may be hard, but we will get there. Say we will get there. Say we will get there. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say, Lord, help me. Help me. Help me. Help me to offer this sacrifice at the altar of sacrifice in Jesus name somebody say amen come on say amen say amen amen so go and purpose something in your heart that means begin to commune with the spirit and allow whatever the number God gives you as a sacrifice and you know that it's a sacrifice prepare it and bring it tonight and those that are able to do it, if the Lord is speaking to you now and you have given you a number and you want to release it because you know that, just like me, I didn't want to leave that place without fulfilling it because I didn't want no problem. Get home and then I can't sleep because I missed it. All because of 1500. And so if God is speaking to you now and you want to raise your altar of sacrifice, release it now. Those that are maybe in different countries that maybe you're about to go to sleep, uh, I want you to go ahead, release your altar of sacrifice ASAP before Satan get into your mind. Don't allow the enemy to deter you. Amen and amen. 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 May the Lord grace us to be able to raise this altar in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to begin to thank the Lord right now. Yan tali la la masuka di la la baha. I kapato lo bosika di la la basha katayas. Palo la la masuka de de bosha katayas. Yes, Lord Jesus, we give you praise. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May the Lord honor His word. May Jehovah honor his word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And so feel free to give your offerings. And then tonight at 6 p.m., we are here. We are here. We are almost there. We will finish strong. We will come out of this fast victorious. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So let's share the grace of God together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. See you at six. God bless. Hey, family. Thank you so much for joining us for today's service. The Eagles are indeed arising. On behalf of Apostle Dominic Ose and Prophetess Leslie Ose, we want to thank you so much for joining us at Kingdomful Tabernacle International Ministries. Our mission here at Kingdomful Tabernacle is to manifest the kingdom of God here on earth. Join us here, 65 Tokenique, Darien, Connecticut, United States of America. Sis. Yes. Do you know what week it is? What week is it? It's the final week of the 21 day marriage and destiny fast. Is it? The final week. Is it? Do you know what that means? What that do you mean? It's not too late for them to join. Nah. So if you're watching this and you haven't plugged in, it's not too late for you to join and tap into every grace. 
We pray corporately four times a day at 12 a.m., 5 a.m., 12 p.m., and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please note that each new prayer topic is presented at 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will be in-house for 12 p.m., 6 p.m., and 12 a.m. prayers. All corporate prayer sessions will be streamed on YouTube and Facebook by searching Kingdom Full Tabernacle. Join us in prayer from any part of the world. Please note that the last four days we will be meeting in person. Registration has officially been closed. On Thursday, October 19th, we will be having our marriage seminar at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Our marriage seminar is for married couples only, and tickets must be purchased at kftchurch.com. Registration will be closing soon, so please be sure to get your tickets as soon as possible. All location details will be sent via email closer to the event date. If you are in need of child care, please do email info at kftchurch.com. Details for child care for the marriage seminar are as follows. Child care services for infants to 13 year olds will be provided for married couples who have purchased their tickets for the dinner at a fee. If you need child care, kindly email info at kftchurch.com and details will be sent to those who are inquiring. All families in need of child care must complete a registration form with complete information about any allergies or medical needs and must sign a consent form. All children must be registered to be cared for. Drop-off time will be from 6 p.m. to 6.45 p.m. sharp on the night of the dinner. Registration closes on Tuesday, October 17th at 11.59 p.m. Please note during Marriage Fast Weekend, there will be Sunday school during Sunday service. It is what? the 12-hour prayer shut-in because we're getting ready to Kaba, 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 Kaba. So for our 12-hour shut-in on Friday, October 20th, we'll be having our 12-hour prayer marathon from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Doors will open one hour before service. We urge you to arrive early to secure a good spot. The dress code is Christian casual, meaning be comfortable but appropriate. Please wear comfortable shoes and socks and dress lightly. Please break your fast before the 12-hour prayer marathon with something extremely light so that you can pray effectively. Absolutely no food or gum chewing is allowed in the sanctuary. No water bottles from outside will be permitted upon premises and upon entry. Water will be available in the foyer. If your child needs to be fed, please exit the sanctuary into the foyer to do so. All parents are responsible for their own children during the entire service. There will be no separate designated area for the children except during Sunday service. Parents, please do stay with your children at your seats at all times. Strollers and car seats will not be allowed and car seats are not permitted on top of seats. If you would like to stand at the altar during the 12 hour shut-in, please be advised that you will not be given a seat. There will be no seat reservations as well. It is first come, first serve. Changing or moving seats is also not allowed. Upon entry into the sanctuary, please follow the instructions of the greeter who is the usher at the door as they will direct you to your assigned seats. We advise using the virtual options for sewing and offering. Please be mindful of your surroundings during prayer. Children are not allowed to be in the pit in the front of the altar or personal items allowed at the altar. Please do be your brother's keeper and look out for one another. On Saturday, October 21st, we'll be having our praise and worship night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Doors open at 6 p.m. Come prepared to praise. On behalf of the protocol team, we would like to update you on rules and regulations for the upcoming event. Upon arrival, all attendees will be screened by security protocol through metal detectors each day. Once you enter, please put all electronics and keys in the bin and follow the directions of the protocol. Please refrain from bringing large bags for the sake of space. We advise a small fanny pack, clear or crossbody bags as we will be standing in prayer for an extended period of time. We kindly ask you do not bring any harmful objects that may pose a potential threat or harm to a person. Large luggages and handbags will not be permitted in the sanctuary for space and safety. Please note that if you come in and leave, you will have to go through the line again and be searched. Thank you for your cooperation and we're looking forward to having a safe and wonderful time in the Lord. And finally, 
we are saying thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, my Lord. We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. October 22nd, we are crowning the fast. We will be having our amazing Thanksgiving and healing service. Yes. The service will start at 10 a.m. and doors will open at 9 a.m. So don't be late. And God has been so amazing to KFT. He's blessed us with two amazing branches. Our first branch is located in Charlotte, North Carolina. We have Jericho Hour every Saturday at 10 a.m. We also have Sunday service at 1 p.m. Our second branch is located in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. We have Sunday service at 11 a.m. Please join us for a great time in the presence of God. God has been so good to us at KFT, and we have so many testimonies. All testimony requests should be submitted by 5 p.m. on Fridays. Please be mindful of your testimony time and always stick to the God Factor. Would you like to be a member of KFT? Fill out this form and additional information will be shared with you on our membership process. This form will also be available to scan after today's service. Lastly, please be sure to follow us on all social media platforms. Any updates concerning our upcoming programs will be posted on our platforms. And that's, that's all for today's, today's announcements. God bless you.